2016, first order of business is the roll call. Charles um, Andresen? Here. Davis Nelson? Here. Rick Nico? Here. Jason Greenleaf? Here. Rob McSorley? Present. Seth Garrison? Yes. And I'm Ben Viola. <coughs> uh, approval of minutes? Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. I think we already had a few corrections. Just to I think there might be another one too on page four under CCTV. I believe NASCO has two S's, N-A-S-S-C-O, National Association of Sur Sur Source Service Companies. I two think S's? Is. I believe so. Mm -hmm. On uh, page two, um, 4A, the last line, provide should be provided. Where were you? I'm sorry. For a provided. No provided. And then I might as well state mine on uh, page three, item F, second line, about halfway through. It says all this, and it's got an is after the is taken out. And then on the next paragraph, I guess you'd call it. Mr. So requested Mr. Hughes to provide for now I have to see what okay <coughs> any others any others all in favor one two <coughs> superintendent's operation report uh, the monthly report of operations uh, for the month of July was included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.16 million gallons per day. Our effluent quality was well, well um, within our permitted limits. We averaged 93% uh, BOD removal and 94% total suspended solids removal with uh, concentrations of 20 milligrams per liter and 19 milligrams per liter respectfully. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of July are included in your packet. Higgins Beach Pump Station had an errant flow calculation due to some equipment maintenance. And then the Industrial Park Pump Station uh, had an errant high flow. Uh, at this time, we don't know what the cause is. The mechanics were looking into it. Other than those irregularities, uh, we have no issues. Um, the town has completed so the town's consultant has completed the uh, report with regards to sewering west of the turnpike with some cost of uh, talking to the town engineer. It appears at this point the project will not be moving forward. Uh, I have changed brokers for the purchase of electricity. Mr. Chairman, yep. I just wondered, uh, are there copies of that report available to the... To yes, the I, have I have both a hard copy and electronic. I could provide either to you. Uh, yeah, could you forward an electronic copy would be fine to me. Okay, sure. And you have just these one copy? Yeah, I'd love to see that too. Why don't you just send it all? I'll send it to all the trustees. <laughs> Do we know what the issue is with regard to not, not moving forward? Or? Um, I think it's mostly financial. Uh, I've changed brokers for the purchasing of electricity. Previously, we used main power options. Currently, um, uh, I'm using competitive energy services. The reason for the change is competitive energy services were able to secure several more bids for our energy needs. With that, we did sign an agreement with um, ENGIE Resources, LLC, for a contract price of 6.124 cents per kilowatt hour. Our current rate is 5.99 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's an increase of 2.2 percent, a nominal increase I, I, I would consider. The term of this contract is for three years, so we'll be locked into that price. And that's for uh, power only. That does not include um, delivery costs. Uh, CMP rate hike, as I mentioned, uh, uh, 
at the last meeting on July 1st, CMP announced an immediate rate hike on the distribution portion of electricity charges. Mr. Anderson had asked with, uh, what the potential impact was on the district and overall it was estimated the district could be impacted with up to 30% increase of the uh, distribution cost of electricity. Uh, so I took a, uh, some time and looked at last year. We spent $60,000 approximately on electricity delivery charges for our medium service account, which is what this would impact. A 30% increase would equate to an additional $18,000 per year, or approximately 9000 of additional costs for this year. Um, I'll keep you posted as these costs hit, but as of uh, July, our bill has not reflected any notable increase in costs, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be monitoring that situation. One of our 150 horsepower blowers for the aeration tanks, um, uh, the motor has failed and needs to be replaced or rewound. Uh, this motor has been rebuilt once before and um, is a good candidate for rebuilding again. It's not really a good candidate for rebuilding again. Um, uh, we have gotten one estimate for replacement of $10,500. Um, we're looking at getting some additional uh, estimates for rebuilding. Um, I've also reached out to a blower manufacturer to get some budget estimates for a smaller duty blower to replace it with. Uh, in the winter, we turn our current blowers down as low as possible and still are over aerating. With that, I decided to look into the, this cost effectiveness of replacing the 150 horsepower blower with a smaller unit just to try to increase our efficiencies during um, wintertime operation. Question. Um, with regard to sizing that down, um, if we were to lose one of the other large blowers, uh, would we then be under? Would be would we be undersized for our operations to uh, continue in that kind of a scenario with a smaller blower here? Um, at, at this point, no. No, we we have, we have plenty of aeration capacity. We have too much right now, actually. If we had the 250s and say if we went with the 75, we ha we'd have more than enough aeration capacity to meet our needs. If one of the large if one of the down. larger ones went down, yes. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> um, the new generator at pump station two has been started up and is now fully functional. Carol and Paul uh, really need to be commended on this work. They did a great job and saved us a lot of money. Uh, Ken Welch has once again passed all of the DMRQA testing protocol for BOD, pH, total residual chlorine, fecal coliform, settleable solids, and total suspended solids. And once again, he should be commended. Um, We've had a rash of uh, odor complaints uh, this past month. Pump Station 2, Pine Point Road, Iris Drive, East Grand <coughs> Ave. Um, um, let's see. Yeah, on East Grand Ave, it was heading towards Old Orchard Beach. And we've also had a complaint uh, in and around the plant. With the warmer weather, hydrogen sulfide production has certainly increased. We have documented the increase in hydrogen sulfide at both the terminus of pump station number one and pump station number two. The most recent data for the hydrogen sulfide con concentrations are 40 parts per million at the terminus of the force main for pump station one and 123 parts per million for the manhole just upstream pump station number two. Went well. Um, the scheduled odor control work at pump station one will help mitigate this issue at at uh, Pine Point and Pump Station 2. This work should be completed by the summer of 2017, so it will certainly help us next year. Uh, this week, uh, we have an ongoing pilot test for an odor control system. Um, the, the unit has already been pilot tested at Pump Station number 2 and has currently now been uh, moved to Pump Station uh, 11. Um, as previously mentioned, 
the technology generates ozone, which when combined at the nozzle of small part particles of water generates the hydroxyl radical. The system was, is manufactured from VAPEX environmental technologies. Um, so far, uh, it's had, uh, it has shown some positive results at uh, pump station two and at 11. Uh, we do have some, we did set up some hydrogen sulfide monitoring devices at both locations to see the before and after during the test. And as you may recall, I had hired Rhonda uh, Forrester as a temporary employee to insist in the audit slash accounting of our commercial accounts. Rhonda has now started and has begun this work. Um, and so if you come by the plant at some point in time, you'll likely meet uh, Rhonda. She's doing a great job. And a couple more uh, uh, items. Um, this September is the main wastewater I'm going to call it Control Association uh, Conference. It's not called that anymore. They've changed the name, but I've forgotten what it's called. Water Environment. Water Environment. Is, um, thanks. Um, both Carl and I uh, will be presenting at it with regards to um, generator selection, installation, and operations at um, uh, sanitary district. So, uh, it'll be a good opportunity for Carl to speak and uh, uh, sh uh, share his knowledge. So I'm looking forward to that. Any questions on the information? Is the uh, H2S posing a threat or a problem with regard to manhole structures or any concrete pipe? I'm um, sorry, I didn't catch the, you. The hydrogen sulfide generation mm -hmm. issue, is that likely to cause a problem? <laughs> For manhole structures and yes, I mean appreciate the fact that we're going forward with odor control, but what about other steps to manage the hydrogen? The, the hydrogen sulfide certainly does uh, is a corrosive uh, gas and does eat away at at both wet wells and uh, concrete um, at some of our terminus manholes for force mains. There is certainly indication of corrosion at the as a result of the hydrogen sulfide, and these are areas that will definitely need to be uh, uh, rehabilitated in the near, near future with some type of epoxy coating. Any other measures to try to control the generation of hydrogen sulfide? The, uh, the, the system at pump station one that will be completed, the installation should be completed by this summer, is for exactly that. The system that we tested at pump station two, that's on the pilot test that's going on right now, is just a uh, mitigation for the odors. But the system at pump station one is to stop the generation of the odor. Thank you. The hydrogen sulfide. That, that was my question. Uh, you know, what we're doing is it do both, and what you're doing at one will do both. The generation and the yes. On a related note, um, have you looked at air release valves or any of the force mains at all? If you're getting hydrogen sulfide, are you seeing any air pockets or anything in the pipes? We we our air release valves are on a routine maintenance. Okay, good. So they're 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 checked into and and they actually uh, <coughs> how we maintain them is they're all on quick release. Uh, clam couplings, and so we actually pull them, replace it, bring it back to the shop, rebuild it. Good. So you're not seeing any corrosion around those then? Anything? Oh, yeah. We do see corrosion around them. Definitely. Thank you. Um, just curious about the current odor control chemical that you use. Is it just, it's not as effective as it could be? We're not using enough? Or is it time for a different approach, and that's why you're looking at these different alternatives? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Have you looked? <laughs> All right. Good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, we, in the summertime, we can't seem to add enough of the nitrates in order to stay ahead of the sulf yep. hydrogen sulfide production. Um, what was the other two questions, I'm sorry. No, that, that was it. And you were looking at the other two alternatives. There's another alternative that a neighboring district is, th is using now with some success, and that's just using caustic soda or yeah. um, NaOH. Uh, what that does is it raises the pH, preventing the, the mm -hmm. um, 
formation of hydrogen sulfides, the thing it does is it just passes the problem downstream. You know, so just another alternative to think about. There's a lot of <coughs> techniques, and unfortunately, none of them are cheap. No, they are not. Not. Jason, did you have a question as well? I did not. Think. So just but going a little bit further on that, but this is pretty much a seasonal problem, though. Correct. So <laughs> we'll yeah. be probably looking at three or four months out of the year. Our worst time for order generations is um, August, um, July, August, September, and a little bit into November. Um, that's that's the typical window that we have major issues. Okay, moving on to correspondence. I had to submit a non-compliance incident report <coughs> to DEP this past month due to a malfunction in our incubator, which nullified the results of our BOT test for the week of August 1st. On Monday morning, August 8th, our senior operator was removing the August 3rd BOD samples to complete the analysis when he discovered that the incubator's temperature was at 40 degrees centigrade versus the 20 degrees that it was supposed to be set at. It speculated that the incubator controls were inadvertently kicked, resulting in the temperature being reset to 40 degrees. I provide you with a picture in the incident report. Um, and that showed the controls of the incubator at floor level. Uh, we have since reset the temperature and the incubator seems to be functioning well as intended. We also added a kick plate over the controls to prevent this from happening again. There is none. No business. New business. New business. Muddy paws. Uh, Muddy Paws uh, is uh, building a facility at 413 Payne Road. Uh, re they are requesting district approval for a change in use of an existing sewage building located at 413 Payne Road. Uh, Muddy Paws will be converting the space to a dog daycare slash boarding business. Muddy Paws will feature a combination of indoor slash outdoor play yards, all covered in a uh, canine grass, which is a dog-specific turf product. Uh, only the indoor portion of the yards will flow to the sewer facility. Uh, the facility will house, house up to uh, 100, will be designed to house uh, up to 120 dogs. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Um, I do have an update with regards to flow. The flow is to be limited to uh, 480 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Any future flows in excess of this approved amount of flow or flow characteristics are subject to an additional approvals. The increase in the flow, I, I did some more research. I got some of the water data from their previous facility. And um, they, their, uh, so their water data from the previous facility had, uh, they utilized about seven gallons per day per dog. Um, the, they are going uh, extreme steps to actually using uh, some very expensive equipment to reduce flow. So um, you saw their calculations that they, they originally came up with 160 gallons per day. I was very skeptical about that. I think the four gallons per day uh, per dog uh, is a reasonable um, uh, number to to begin the monitoring at um, and as we move forward I'll keep very close uh, attention to that number. So we have some plans also. Yep. Um, looking at plan C100. <coughs> I didn't realize you storage service line. I probably couldn't come in we use a six inch. We use six inch to the property line from our sewer service, uh, from our sewer lateral domains and then the owners can reduce to four inch. It's not uncommon for them to reduce to four inch at the property line. Chairman, uh, you said that we figured on 180 <coughs> gallons a day. Their capacity reserve is 160, right? Their capacity reserve is currently based on 160. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, well, it'll be. Uh, I'm, I haven't gotten to there yet. I was going to. Oh, do it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You have an okay. Next page. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm still on 
one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the partial was part of the eight corner sewer extension project and was allocated 160 gallons per day. Um, consequently, at the 480 gallons per day that I'm recommending approval for, uh, they would be, um, you would subtract the, the allocation of 160 gallons per day from, so the remaining 320 gallons per day would be subject to capacity reserve fee. Uh, that would be 4,832 gallons per day based on the current capacity reserve fee. Um, do you, you restate that in dollars? $4,832. Good. Thank you. I said dog years. What is that? I thought you said dog years. <laughs> you said gallons. You said gallons. <laughs> Did I say gallons? Is that a dog gallons or regular gallons? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, detectable underground utility marking tape and tracer wire, uh, all sewer piping shall have uh, the marking tape and tracing wire in accordance with district standards. Monthly 24-hour composite sample of the wastewater is required of which we will be tested for BOD, COD, and TSS. Data must be provided to the district monthly. The superintendent has the right to modify the sampling program as needed to ensure representative data is obtained. Final plans shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits, including invert elevations, grade elevations, slopes, and a dated PE stamp. And a professionally certified electronic geo-reference CAD drawing, stamped PDF of the CAD drawing, and stamped paper copy be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Seconded. Any discussion? Just a question on uh, the discrepancy between the original 160 gallons per day and the uh, 480. What were the contributing factors to that change? Um, well, I, I was doing some research and um, I found a reference in the main substance, uh, subsurface disposal uh, rules that actually lists a gallon per day per dog in a kennel. And uh, their number is um, seven and a half gallons per day per dog. Um, so I, I, re you know, I reached out to them and I had uh, some lengthy conversations with the, uh, the owners of Muddy Paws and I recognized what they're doing with regards to water uh, conservation and um, so then I, I had them provide me the water data from their previous facility, and their previous facility came in at approximately seven gallons per day per dog. So that matched very closely to the main subsurface rules. But recognizing what they're doing with regards to water conservation, I, um, you know, I, I thought the, the four gallons per day per dog was a reasonable number, but I'm also concerned with the fact that water conservation does that, just that. It conserves water, it doesn't necessarily, uh, the strength of the waste, may cause the strength of the wastewater to increase. Mm -hmm. So that's why I added the sampling, with the monthly sampling, such that we can monitor that and the reference to the, t the that the waste strength be um, comparable to, with typical sanitary wastewater. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that requirement for sampling, is it indefinite or is there a certain time period and they have to do it? It's indefinite right now. Okay. Subject to my modifications, if need be. Any further questions? All in favor of the motion? Yeah. So, our next item, budget summary. Uh, the seven month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. So moved. Second. Nick, who was second? I think. Uh, Dave and I. Did. Dave. Charlie.
So the way the budget's tracking right now, the eighteen thousand dollars <coughs> in additional CMP fees um, should be able to be absorbed without any issue by year end. Yeah. Why are they counting? That was for the audit, which was completed. Yeah, question. Just another question. Um, on this 30% rate increase from CMP on the uh, delivery charge, um, what was the formal notification? This is the first, the last <coughs> last month was the first that I was actually aware that that was coming. What, did we get any advance <coughs> notice other than the notice that that was being implemented immediately? Or? I got a notice actually from our... Um, Energy broker, main power options, uh, via an email that this was happening, um, and they referenced a article in the uh, Portland Press Herald. I did not receive anything from CMP. If, if, I, if it was in a billing envelope, I missed it. I didn't see it. Um, but that's where I, I got so it. It was very vague. And I think what the only thing that I would want to suggest is that we might want to get back to CMP and to the PUC and just let them know that, you know, 30% is a substantial increase in anyone's budget and that we just want to double check on what the notification process was. Because folks ought to know that in advance and be able to plan into their budgets what the heck is going on. And if there was no notice, I think that's something that they should address. Yeah. The and I just for the audience I want to make it clear that the 30% uh, increase that they were talking about was for what they identify as medium power users. It's not uh, uh, it's not impact that 30% does not impact an homeowner. Oh, I understand the, the, no, the, I'm that line. Yeah, that line of the budget will go up by two percent next yeah. well for, on an annual basis. Yeah, yeah, I would be curious to see what status if the rate case has gone completely through and what would this which which would be you know where I didn't yeah. see it in the July bill yeah. and it was very clear in the in the document the email that I got that it was supposed to be immediate but it's it's not re wasn't reflected at all in the July bill so because it might be in process mm -hmm. in the rate case in which case they wouldn't no wouldn't have notified people yeah. so is this across CMP's service area You've seen it too in your bill. Or we'll see it. You want me to 30%? It wasn't 30%. I think it's like 15 for homeowners. I only know that from reading it in the paper. Um, we're going to next year. Any other comments on on the budget? We already approved it, I guess. But, um, Did, was the budget approved? Uh, yeah. Voted on? No, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Voted yeah. All right. <laughs> All in favor of approving the budget? Did Did anyone? I think we did the motion. Here. Did somebody make an emotion motion? Yeah, Nick and I moved. Yeah. You've been missing this, Dave. Are you awake? Wake up. No. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Nicky, Wendy. <laughs> so anyway, we're moving on now to uh, public comments. Uh, Pretty far out there tonight. So, uh, trustee comments. We can start with Jason. <coughs> uh, kudos to Ken for keeping up on his certifications. You know that's not always easy. But, uh, he does a great job. So, congrats, Ken. Uh, also, want to send my condolences to the Bromley family and the loss of Joe Bromley this week. Nick, I will echo my tr fellow trustees' comments. Commend Ken for. Passing the DMR QA 36. Good job, Ken. Very strange place to put a thermostat on the bottom floor there. <laughs> that. So I looked at that picture. I thought that was very odd. I'm guessing that incubator was actually designed to sit on top of a counter. Uh, okay. So. Sorry? We're done? Yes. Oh, hey, okay. Ah. Happy end of summer. Um, hope everybody has a safe and happy Labor Day holiday coming up. Um, I want to thank you, Dave, for following up and bringing us back the numbers on the impact from the CMP rate adjustment. 
and also uh, echo the comments congratulating Ken Welch on his uh, test protocol proficiency. And also happy to see uh, the superintendent and Carl presenting at the, uh, uh, is it the, uh, what is it, Water Environment? Water Envi Maine Water yeah. Environment Association. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, happy to see you presenting at that. I think it still is a credit to our organization to have you guys out and presenting at those meetings. So I think that I think that's great. So I appreciate that. Ditto, 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 ditto. <laughs> Also, uh, good work uh, on pump station number two generator by Carl and Paul. Thank you very much for that uh, hard work and all you guys do. Uh, also, Echo, have a happy Labor Day weekend and uh, be careful of the kids going back to school. Thanks. Ditto well, and going back to school with kids. Uh, it's going to be good out there, that's for sure. Uh, and glad to pass the test. <laughs> and everyone have a uh, happy Labor Day. Thank you. And as I say, have a happy Labor Day, and I think you got a great staff down at the junior plant. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Beth, take a motion to. So moved. Second. All in favor? <coughs> we'll adjourn.